Hi, welcome to our Spotlight On program here at Wood Library. Today we're shining the spotlight on Selena Yoon's penguin. And before we actually have a story, we're going to start off by making a penguin. So let me just get our things ready and I'll show you how to do it too. To make our penguin, we're going to be using a paper cup, a black one. We'll need some eyes, so I've got some Google eyes stuck on glue dots. Some cardstock. We've got some black, white, and orange. From home, you're going to want to have a pair of scissors, a glue stick, and maybe a pencil. First of all, you're going to look at your cup. Have it upside down so that the hole's in the bottom. And find where the seam is on the back of the cup. That's going to be the back of your penguin, so you're going to be putting all of your decorations on the other side. Start off by taking your Google Eyes. And if you don't have Google Eyes at home, you can just make circles and draw black dots in them. I pulled it off of my glue dot strip, and I'm going to put one of the eyes right up high, and the other one right next to it. Then I'm going to take the white piece of paper. This is going to be my penguin's belly. And I'm going to look and see how much space I actually have between his eyes and the bottom of the cup, because that's the area we're going to fill with his white belly. So you can use your pencil to kind of mark off where that will be, like that. And then draw a circle, an oval, even an egg shape is fine. You're going to want it rounded on the top. I'm just kind of sketching it on here. And I even have it a little bit flat on the bottom. And then I'm going to look and see whether it's actually going to fit where I have it. And I think it is. So then I'll take my scissors and cut it out. So there's my penguin's belly. And because I don't want my pencil lines to show, I'm gonna take my glue stick and put the glue on the side where I can see the pencil lines. Just put the glue on and glue it right underneath the eyes. And hold it in place until the glue sets. So there's my belly on it. Next, I'm going to want to give him some feet. Take your piece of orange cardstock and fold it in half. Even off the end where the fold isn't. So it just looks like that. My fold is at the bottom. And then the easiest way I think to make a penguin's feet is to draw the letter W. So I'm going to, right in the middle, I'm going to make my W right from the top. So I go down, up, down, up, just like that. And then I'm going to draw a line from the top of each side all the way to the fold. Like that. Now it almost looks like hmm, a frog's leg or maybe even a crown. Then you can cut that out. And I'm doing one of my tricks that I like to do cutting once and winding up with two pieces. So because we have a fold, when you cut this out, you will wind up having your two feet. So I've got it cut out. And the last thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is to cut off the fold. Because I 
don't want them to be two separate feet. Now don't throw away your scraps because if you look at your scraps, you'll see that they are little orange triangles. And do you know what that can be? That can be your penguin's beak. So you can take your feet and I'm going to fold mine up just a little bit. And then I'm going to put it on the bottom of the cup so that the fold part is up in the back inside. And I'm actually going to tape my feet in there. You can use a glue stick, but I think this will hold it a little bit better. So there's one foot. And I'll put this one right next to it. So oh, there's my penguin with his two feet. I'll use the glue stick again to put on that beak right underneath his eyes. Like that. And the last thing I have is this circle. I'm going to cut it in half. And those can be my penguin's wings. So I'll just glue those on the side. And I'm only gonna put glue on the top because I'd kind of like them to stick out the side. So there's my penguin. Does yours look like that too? And I thought we could do a little rhyme with him. I'm a little penguin, black and white, stout and fluffy, oh, what a sight. I can't fly, but I love to swim. So I'll waddle to the water and I'll dive right in. Now that we have our penguin all made, let's have a story. This is Selena Yoon's first book about penguin. It's called Penguin and Pinecone, a friendship story. One day, Penguin found a curious object. What's this, he wondered. Hmm, it was too brown to be a snowball. Too hard to be food, crunch, and too prickly to be an egg, ouch. Whatever you are, you're cold, said Penguin. So Penguin got busy, knit one, purl two. He made a scarf. Penguin loved his new friend. They slid together, whoosh. They flew together, well, at least the friend flew. They even swam together, <gasps> choo went the friend. Uh-oh. What's wrong with my friend? Oh, it's too cold here, said Grandpa. Pinecone belongs in the forest far, far away. He can't grow big and strong on the ice. Penguin sighed. I better take you home, Pinecone. Penguin packed his sled for the long journey. The wind pushed hard, but Penguin pulled harder. And finally, the forest! Pinecone, you're home! Penguin made a cozy nest out of the softest pine needles he could find. The day grew hotter and hotter. Goodbye, Pinecone. You will always be in my heart, said Penguin. There's Pinecone on a little nest of needles. And look what he did with the rocks. He made a heart, didn't he? Well, time passed. 
and passed and passed. Had Pinecone grown big and strong like Penguin had? Penguin set off to find out. Pinecone? Now can you see? Do you remember what Pinecone was wearing? That orange scarf, right? So which one is Pinecone? This one right here grew into a tree, didn't he? Pinecone! Penguin and Pinecone played and played. And plop! Do you see what fell out of pine cone? Now that he's a tree? Another pine cone, yeah. Well, pine cone was sad to see penguin go, but the forest is no place for a penguin. Penguin and pine cone may have been far apart, but they always stayed in each other's heart. Look what pine cone gave all those needles and penguin made a little nest for himself out of them. And you know, when you give love, hmm, what's this, she asked. It grows. And I don't know if you can see, but all of these littler trees have things on them from their penguin friends. So that's penguin and pine cone. But what we're going to do now is we are going to, well, make Penguin a friend. If you got one of our take and make bags from the library, you might have noticed that there was a pine cone in it. And also look around because you will have found a piece of orange felt. Can you guess what that's going to be? That's right, it's going to be pine cone scarf. So I'm just going to tie this around my pine cone. I have to go up a little high on it so it'll go all the way around what might have been his neck. But if you tuck it into the layers of the pine cone, it'll go around and fit nicely and stay in place and you'll be able to have enough to tie it off. Now my pine cone is happy too. Should we have another story? That was just a quick little craft. Well, you probably noticed at the end of that story that Penguin was lying in a nest, a heart-shaped nest of pine needles. So I thought this one would be a good one to follow up with. This is called Penguin in Love. Instead of having pine cones inside the cover, we're going to have all kinds of balls of yarn. Because you know that one of the things that Penguin likes to do is knit. One day, Penguin was looking for love. What's that? He wondered. Instead, he found a mitten. Hmm, it was a mystery. There were no fingerprints and no tracks. Penguin asked Grandpa if it was his. No, Penguin, I like to wear hats. Penguin searched for its owner. Emily was missing a bead, but not a mitten. Isabel was missing a slipper, but not a mitten. Oliver was missing the sun, but not the mitten. Penguin wondered who had knitted such a fine, fine mitten. Meanwhile, Penguin's friend Bootsy was busy knitting cozies. These snout cozies will keep you toasty, she said to her friends, the seals. Knitting warmed her lonely heart. Thank you, said the seals. Now Penguin was busy knitting too. There, 
Now this mitten has a mate. Just then, a couple of puffins from out of town flew down. Do you see what I see? He he hello, uh, are you knitting a bill cozy? Asked the shivering puffin. Do you mean this? Asked Penguin. Yes, said the puffin. I, I dropped mine passing through. Well, the puffin beamed with delight when Penguin gave it to him. Oh, so cozy, so colorful. Thank you, said the grateful lovebirds. Oh, look at that, they gave each other a kiss. Well, the puffins hatched a secret plan to help the penguin find his own perfect match. This bill cozy will make a nice hat, he said to the seal pup. Wait here. I'll knit you a scarf. Now on the other side of the ice, a cold visitor asked Bootsy for a favor. Do you remember Bootsy was knitting cozies for snouts? Could you knit me a sweater? Asked the whale. Oh, this was a big job, but Bootsy wanted to try. When Bootsy reached for her basket, all her yarn was missing. And Penguin noticed that his knitting box was empty too. Oh no, oh my. Well, the penguins went on a search. Hi, Penguin, said Bootsy. Hi, Bootsy, said Penguin. Have you seen my yarn, asked Bootsy. No, said Penguin, I'm missing mine too. Penguin and Bootsy set off to unravel the mystery together. Look, a clue, and just what I was looking for. Do you see who's there? The two puffins. As they looked, they knitted for warmth. They knitted for fun. They knitted for comfort. They even knitted for friends along the way. Row, row, row your flow gently out to sea. <laughs> My, why aren't you humming? Because, said the puffins, we're not hummingbirds. Go with the flow, I say, said the little seal. Merrily, 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 floating happily. Yes, as they knitted for their friends along the way, it made Penguin and Bootsy very happy until a blizzard came and blew the penguins apart. There's Bootsy, there's Penguin. Oh no. Their journeys were long and lonely. Bootsy followed the trail through the rain and snow and dreamed of better days. I hope I will see you again, thought Penguin as he laid out a sign for Bootsy so she could find it. I don't know if you can read that because it's in cursive, but he spelled out B-O-O-T-S-Y and that's how Bootsy spells her name. So he left her a message in the yarn. They knitted peak to peak as the trail of yarn went on and on. They pulled themselves up higher and higher until finally they reached the very top. Penguin and Bootsy had pulled right into each other's heart. Oh, do you see? The yarn that each of them was following led to the top of the hill and the two pieces were tied in a knot. So they had to get together. And together, love was a big adventure. Oh, look at that. They finally did make a sweater for whale. <laughs> and that's the end. I wonder if Penguin and Bootsy got hungry as they were making their long trek to find each other going 
up the hills and down the hills and up the hills and down the hills until they met at the top of the mountain. I bet they were hungry. And do you know what penguins like to eat? Well, they like to eat fish. In your take and make bag, you will have found a little snack that's fish shaped. We've got some pretzels or possibly some crackers. I want you to open up your bag and pour the crackers or the pretzels right on the table in front of you because we're gonna play with our snack before we eat it. We're also going to need a dice or a die, I guess I would call it. One is called a die, two is a dice, but we're only gonna need one. If you have one at home, go ahead and bring it out. If you don't, you should have also found in your bag something that looks like this. And we're going to make that into something that you can use as a dice. So you need a black marker and set it down in front of you. And we're gonna put the dots on that you would have on a die. So we'll have one dot in one box and then three dots in the next one. I don't know if it matters which way you do them. I'm just following the way that they are out here. So there's my three dots. And then six dots in the next one in two rows of three. Like that. And then four dots in the next one. Then we're gonna need five dots in one of the ones that's left. Like that. And then one left, and that's the one we're gonna put two in. So that's what mine looks like. Then I'm going to fold it on all of the dotted lines. And then we're gonna turn it into a box, which will become our die. Now you've got some tabs there that are there. The rounded tabs will tuck in as we're folding it at the end. But the other ones you're going to want to put some glue on the flat end one. So some glue on that one, that one, that one, that one, and eventually that one. So grab your glue stick. Then I'm gonna fold it along that line and it's going to tuck right behind one of the ends. Then I'll put some glue on the other side. And do the same thing. Fold it so it tucks in, just squeeze it. to the other two ends as well. And then that one flat edge that's left, you need to make sure you tuck that in too. and it all just folds together. Just like that. And then make sure you tuck in your rounded ends. Now, if you want, you can tape those. If that's a little easier, just take a piece of tape once you've got it all folded and you can just put that over the edge and that'll hold them in place.
So there's my dice. My die, I keep for saying the wrong one because when it's one, it's a die. So now, are you ready to play a little game? Close up my glue stick, get rid of my marker. So I'm going to get my sheet that says, feed the penguin, and I'm going to put it down here. And I'm turning mine so you can see it. Move my other penguins out of the way. So I'm going to roll, I'm going to sing a little song. Feed the penguin, feed the penguin, roll the die, roll the die. Penguin is so hungry, so very, very hungry. My, oh my, my, oh my. So now I want you to shake your die and roll it and see what number is on it. Mine has a number one, so I'm going to feed my penguin one cracker. You can feed yourself one too if you want. Then I'm going to sing it again. Feed the penguin, feed the penguin, roll the die, roll the die. Penguin is so hungry, oh so very hungry. My oh my, my oh my. Oh, this time it says three, so I'm going to give him three crackers. One more time. Feed the penguin, feed the penguin, roll the die, roll the die. Penguin is so hungry, so very, very hungry. My, oh my, my, oh my. It's on the floor and it wound up being a five. So here you go, penguin. One, two, three, four, five. And I don't know about your penguin, but mine looks like he's full. So I think it's time for me to eat one. You can play this game even if you don't have any crackers. Take your sheet. You might have noticed that it's shiny. I laminated it for you. And if you have a dry erase marker, you can do the same thing. You can sing the song, roll the dice, Feed the penguin, feed the penguin, roll the die, roll the die. Penguin is so hungry, oh so very hungry, my oh my, my oh my. All right, I've got a two. So what I can do is take my dry erase marker and I can draw two fish on his belly. And when I'm done playing it, I can just wipe it off. We have time for one more story about penguins. So we're going to have Penguin on vacation. I wonder where he's going to go. Oh my goodness. Now what's on the inside of this cover? We had pine cones. We had yarn. And now we've got crabs. I need a vacation, Penguin sighed. Snow again. Penguin had skied, sledded, and skated on vacations before. He wanted to go someplace different. 99 balls of snow on the ground, he sang. He wanted to go someplace tropical. That means where it's warm. That's it. I'll go on a vacation to the beach, thought Penguin. That's what gave him the idea. I think that beach ball must have come off of that passenger ship. Penguin packed his bag and headed north. Goodbye, Grandpa, he said. Well, the waves swelled bigger and bigger and the sun shone hotter and hotter. 
But finally, Penguin reached the beach. And it wasn't what Penguin expected. He stepped on a shell. Ow! A coconut fell on his head. Ow! And the sand was oh so hot on his feet. Ow, ow, ow! The beach was nothing like his icy home. And Penguin learned some things. You can't ski on sand. You can't sled on sand. And you definitely can't skate on sand. Are you lost? asked Crab. No, I'm on vacation, said Penguin. Well, then come with me, said Crab. Crab showed Penguin how to have fun on the beach. They built a sand castle. They played catch. They climbed palm trees. And they surfed. Kawabanga! They played and played and played. Crab is burying Penguin in the sand. Penguin loved his new friend. But all vacations come to an end. It was time for Penguin to go home. The journey was long and quiet. And suddenly, Something moved in the water. Crab! Do you see he's there? What are you doing here? I need a vacation too, said Crab. Penguin and Crab finally reached the shore. They swam and swam. There he is. They whooshed had pushed, they fished, and wished. But all vacations do come to an end. Goodbye, Crab. Goodbye, Penguin. Crab set off for home and left behind the sound of the beach. Do you see he left one of those shells? I shall return, wrote Crab on the inside. So Penguin waited and waited and waited and waited. And one day, Crab did return. That was fun. Well, the last thing in your take and make bag was a picture of Penguin on vacation. And you can color this and cut it out. You can turn it into a puppet or you can use it as a bookmark, but it's a way for me to have you be able to remember the time we spent together with our new friend, Penguin. So Penguin, can you come up and say goodbye? Thank you for joining us for this session of Spotlight and we'll be back with another time when we can shine a spotlight on someone special in children's books. See you then. Bye-bye.